Hey everyone, it's Missy, and this week I am here with my youngest son, Ezra. Ezra loves to hang out in the sewing room with me, huh, bud? Yeah. Yep, and so we are starting the Quilt Cadets program, which is an amazing program put together by Latifa Safir, and this is the first project we're going to tackle, so let's do it together. All right, so to make this adorable moonbeam pillow from Quilt Cadets, you are going to need eight two and a half inch strips. So we're using this Kona Bright Rainbow two and a half inch strip roll. And if you buy a whole roll, you can actually make 10 pillows. So this would be a great thing to do with a group of kiddos or their friends for a party um, with just one jelly roll. So that's pretty awesome. Then you're also going to need some fusible fleece and about a half yard, a little less of, we used canvas for the backing on this. And so that's really all you need to get started. I do want to point out Quilt Cadets as part of their program to encourage kids makes these adorable little merit badges. And for different projects, there's different patches that go along with it to help them get excited about the things that they're learning. So this is just such a fun program. And I'm gonna have Latifa Safir tell you a little bit more about that at the end of this tutorial. So be sure to stick around to hear about how she started the program. All right, as you ready to dive into this? Yeah. Okay, let's move this out of the way and get started. So Ez decided he wanted to use these bright rainbow colors just like they used on the pattern. So we pulled out our eight two and a half inch strips. That's what we've got here, right? Yes. And then we are just going to cut these in half. So let's grab some scissors and you can help me and we can just cut these on the fold. You want to do that? All right. So just right here on the fold line, you just put your scissors in there and cut that in half all the way through. There we go. We'll just keep going through the whole stack. Yes. Perfect. All right, so now we're just going to take our halves of these strips and we're going to put them together in pairs. So we're going to start with our red and orange and as we're just going to make sure that's lined up as good as it can be. So our edges are straight. You want to help with that? Make sure it's all straight. Good. And then we're going to sew a quarter inch seam. You remember how we do that? So that's the black line. You want your fabric to line up with that black line. We're using the diagonal seam tape that you see on my machine a lot. And I did switch out away from the accomplish that I usually sew on so that he has a speed control, which is a really good thing. When you're working with kiddos, you don't want him to be sewing too fast. So you want to start on this side of the needle. So come back towards you just a little ways. There we go. Now put your presser foot down. Now you're ready. Okay. Got it. Just that a little bit. And, and keep your hands away from the needle and just guide your fabric and keep it together and you're following that black line. Okay, there you go. Good work, bud. Ooh, getting a little narrow. There we go. Good job. All the way to the end. Good job. Perfect. So now lift your presser foot. You can trim it. Okay, so you're, to make one pillow, you just need one of each of these halves. So you can set aside the other ones for now. And then we're going to go ahead and make uh, sets in all of these colors. So we're gonna finish stitching those up and we'll meet you back here as soon as that part's done. All right, well, I'm all done. All right, so we have our last uh, strip set done here. I've gone ahead and pressed the first few, but let's give this one a press, right? We wanna press it open so it's nice and flat. We're just gonna roll that back. Okay. 
So now the same thing we did before, we're going to sew our sets of two together and then all the way together until our strips are all the way across. You ready? Yeah. All right. So let's put these two together first. And this side is nice and straight. So this might be a good side to start on, don't you think? Yeah. Okay. So if you want to put that under the machine and start stitching. Jared. Good work, buddy. Thank you. All right, take your time. Oh, remember to watch that black line, black line. You don't want to get on the inside of it. You want to stay on that side. Pause, lift your presser, I mean, lift off the pedal. There we go. And straighten your fabric up again. There we go. You got to watch that the whole way. And then with these little points, you just want to keep them right on that black line, okay? Okay. Go again. There you go. Great job. When I did uh, another sewing with kids when, with my daughter, we had a great printable that gives lots of good tips. Pause again. Watch your fabric. See how it's getting crooked? There you go. Just a little bit crooked. No need to worry. You just straighten it up and you can keep going, okay? All right. Just don't get going so fast that you can't keep it straight. There you go. So he just adjusted his speed control. But what I started to say is we have a great printable that just has some lines that you can have your kids practice um, with no thread even in the machine. And if they can follow those lines, it will help them control the fabric under the needle. So that would be a great thing to try even before you start this. And another reason I love the diagonal seam tape, because it lets them follow that line way back here instead of up by the presser foot, it helps keep kids' hands away from the needle, which is what we want. Okay, you ready? Awesome. Take it away, bud. There you go. Need an extra hand? Right on that black line. Beautiful work, bud. Boom. Awesome. Boom, you got it. All right, so we'll line up this one. You can sew this set together, and I'll press this one for you. How's that sound? That sounds good. All right, and when we get this step done, we'll sew these sets together, and we'll meet you back here for that. Ezra, you did it. Look at that, bud. Look how great that looks. That looks awesome. That looks awesome, huh? All right, so now we want to press it so that all of our seams are going the same way. You need to roll all your seams, buddy. We want all the seams to go the same direction. Do you want to press these? Uh, yeah, sure. Sure? Okay. Be really careful because this is hot, hot, okay? So we're trying to get all the seams to go this way. So this one we need to push over. And push this next one over. Good job. Want me to finish it up? Sure. Okay, <laughs> just get them to lay as nice as we can. Ta-da! You wanna hold that up? All right. That looks pretty good, huh? Boom. Boom. Awesome. All right, now it's time to trim it. You ready? Okay, so let's look at our pattern and see what size it tells us to trim. So now that we have our strips ready, we're going to cut a straight side and then we're going to measure over 10 inches and we're going to cut two 10 inch pieces. All right? All right. And I'll help you with that because Rotary cutters are a lot to handle for kids. <laughs> so let's do that. You can watch me though, so you can see how I do it. All right, so we've got our pillow that Ezra sewed already, and we're gonna line it up here on the end. Yeah, you can stand over here, bud. And then we're, I'm gonna use my big ruler. I'm gonna lay it, I'm actually gonna slide over just a bit so I'm not fighting with the edge. We're going to cut off. How much inches did it say it was? Well, I'm just going to see how this is a little uh, uneven on this side. 
I'm just gonna straighten this side up first and then we're measuring over 10 inches is what the pattern said. Okay? All right, so you can help me count once I slice this. So see how now that is nice and straight? Beautiful, that looks great. So then let's count over 10 inches. You wanna count these squares? So one, two, two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten. Perfect. So we're going to cut on that line. Make sure our ruler's nice and straight. And then we'll make our first, whoops, slit a little bit. I'm just going to straighten that up. There we go. There's our first cut. That looks great, huh? So then we're going to measure over ten more. You want to cut ten more? Or count 10 more, I should say. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Perfect. So then we'll line this up. Okay. There we go, bud. Look how great that looks. Can you believe you sewed that? Yeah. That's awesome. All right, so now let's bring these two pieces back over here. All right, you ready? Yep. And we are just gonna, yep, you already did it. So see, they, they came this way. We're gonna flip one of those strips and by making sure that they're pressed in the same direction, when we get to all these little seams, they're gonna nest. So let me show you when we put these together like this. See how this seam on the bottom is going down mm -hmm. and this one's going up. That makes it easier to line up when we get to the machine. And every single place we're gonna go nice and slow and make sure all those little points are as lined up as we can be. You wanna put a clip right there just so you remember. Every time you get to a clip, then you can remember to watch that those little seams line up, right? One more, ta-da! Awesome, that'll help. And then you don't have to fight to keep your fabric lined up quite so much, right? Okay, now we're ready to start stitching. And you just have to remember to just unclip it right before you get up there, okay? So let's put this under here. And a little bit farther, push your fabric in. There we go. And then you can start. You're, you need a haircut. <laughs> Test in your speed. Good job, buddy. Yep, so you can just unclip it. You don't even have to lift your presser foot. Yep, put it right back in the bowl. And then we just want to tuck that little one so that it stays laying down. Got it? If you need me to help, just be really careful up there. There we go. Oop. Oh. It's okay, just pause and I'll help you. You don't have to. So see, now we can just lift the presser foot and make the fabric lay down and you can keep, keep going. Yep. But you just never want to do that when you're pressing on the pedal. <laughs> Important lessons. Remember, watch that black line. Good job. And we'll just keep going all the way down. There you go. All right, open that up. Let's let everybody see it. Look, bud. It looks great. It looks so great. All right, you want me to help you press that center seam yeah, so it's sure. nice and flat? Okay. Let's give that a press. And then we're going to get ready to quilt this. Nice. Can you believe you're going to do the actual quilting too? Right? Pretty yeah, cool. Pretty All cool. right. So we have a piece of fusible fleece. Um, already cut here and we are going to put the sticky side up if you're not familiar with fusible fleece it has like a rough bumpy side and that's the glue can you feel that on there Ezra yeah I can. so we're going to put that towards the wrong side of our pillow top that we've made and this is kind of one of those things that could go either way when you're quilting it's nice to have a little bit of extra room 
Um, so I've cut mine a little bit larger. You can see how it, it goes all the way around, but because we're working with fusible, you have to make sure that the iron doesn't hit the glue, right? Yeah. Otherwise it will melt or stick to the iron. So we're just gonna be really careful now, and I'm gonna iron this to this, okay? Oh, so when you iron it, the glue sort of... And it holds the fleece to this fabric. That's cool. Super cool. All right, so let's move that over here, and we will do that. We're just gonna be really careful to make sure the metal part of the iron doesn't get on the white part of the fleece. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. We'll just get as close to the edge as we can. Let's turn this. Okay, and so now it's all stuck together. Isn't that cool? Yeah, that's really cool. That's awesome. Okay, so now this is one of those opportunities where if you have a walking foot, you could totally use it. This is not so thick that this is impossible to do on a regular machine with a regular foot. And so I wanna make sure you guys know that you can sew with your kids just on a normal machine. So Ezra's gonna do the quilting without the walking foot and we are just gonna do some straight lines and follow the seams that he's already made. So as you want to start here doing a few. Oh, sure. And so I think probably the easiest thing would be to just line this up with the edge of your foot since you can't see you can't see the um, diagonal seam tape anymore, right? Yeah. Because we're working with a bigger piece. So see how the edge of your foot is right on the edge of that orange? Yeah. Do you think you can keep it like that? Probably. All right, that's what we're going to do. You don't have to go too fast, just take your time. That looks great, bud. You speed up a bit. All right. Like driving a car, huh? Okay, so should I just do this to this one? Yep, now you're just gonna follow you're just gonna follow the blue instead of the purple. Just like you were following the orange. Oh, that looks great. Beautiful. There you go, you can stop now. There you go. All right, and trim that. You could use your scissors if that's easier. You got it? All right, look at that. So there's your first quilting line. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So now we're gonna continue doing that all the way across on either side. So he'll, he'll go all the way across on this side. We'll flip it around and do it again. And then we'll come back and sew either side of this center seam as well. That's gonna take us a minute, so we'll go ahead and take a little break here and wrap that up, and we'll meet you back here when it's done. Okay, look at that. It's finished. All done, doesn't that look great? Yeah. I think that turned out great, buddy. So now we're gonna trim this down to the size of our pillow. Okay, so we can check in our pattern, and it says that our pillow needs to be trimmed to 16 and a half. Square. So we're probably going to have to trim all four sides. So let's bring it over here, huh? And I will help you do that. All right. So since you have this cool middle line, I think we'll start by trimming it this direction. And we want to make sure the middle stays in the center. So I'm lining it up with this big bold line on my 15 inch mark of my mat. See that? And then we can measure over eight and one quarter inch on each side because that'll make it even and eight and a quarter plus eight and a quarter equals 16 and a half. All right. So count over eight this way. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we need to hang over a little bit for eight and a quarter, right? So let's do that. 
Right there. That's right cool. there. That looks awesome. Okay. Cut number one. So now, because I'm right handed, I'm going to rotate this all the way around. Do the same thing. Line my center seam right back up on that same line. And we can count over again. You want to do it again? Eight One, and, two, and three, a quarter. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then eight. This, yep, and so then a little bit past that line, right? And then we gotta do just about right here, right? Yep, that's right. That's the quarter inch mark on the ruler. So we've got that all lined up. Boom. Ta-da! Now I'm gonna start saying boom just like you. Yeah. Okay, so let's do the same idea this way. Since we know this is the center seam that we did this direction, we can do the same thing. And we're just gonna have to trim a little bit off either side this way to make it all match, okay? All right, so same thing. I think our eight and a quarter line was right here. So see, we're just trimming that tiny bit off the end. There's that one. We'll flip it around. Ready. Good work. And right. Yep. Oh, here. Exactly. Is that one right? That is. Yeah. Good job, bud. There we go. Okay. Boom. Look at that. All square. You did it. I love it. Okay, so let's sit that down, and now we can make the envelope back because we're going to make an envelope back for this so that you can put a pillow form inside. And so Ezra picked out this cool green canvas, right? Mm -hmm. So we've got this one ready to go and we cut both of these pieces at 16 and a half by 11, right? Yep. Okay. So let's get this one ready. And to do that, we are going to turn under one long side, a half an inch. Okay. And so you can use your ruler. I've got this little one here, and this is a half an inch. You see that on there, bud? So that's what we're looking for. I usually just eyeball this, okay? You wanna help me turn it under? You think that looks like about a half an inch? Yeah, about here. You better check, yeah. Let's just do this, and then drop this chair. Yeah, that's... That looks pretty good, huh? That looks honestly perfect. Okay, awesome, and then we will just, We've eyeballed it, we can give it a little finger press, and then we're gonna press it really good with the iron. So I'm gonna come in here with the iron and just move that out of the way so we don't melt our ruler. And then, now that we have that first one, all we're gonna do is roll it one more, and we're gonna press it again. All right. All right. We did it. Now we're gonna stitch this down, okay? Okay, all right, so let's put that presser foot down. We're just lining this up with the edge of the presser foot. Again, so this is a little wider than a quarter of an inch since we've got that half inch um, turned under. And we're just gonna sew straight down. He's got his eagle eyes in there. If you're watching up here, you're staying right at the edge of that presser foot. Good job. He chose this cool blue thread that we're, we're using through the whole thing, and he did his quilting with. It's like perfect. It's looking great. You're learning, huh? Yeah. yeah. All the way to the end. There we go. Watch your fingers. Awesome. You did it. There you go. All right. So now... We've got our beautiful pillow top all trimmed up to 16 and a half, and we are going to keep it right sides up, just like this, and we're gonna lay this, but we want right sides together. So see how this is the wrong side? Yeah. That's the part we want inside. We're gonna put that one there, and we're gonna do the same thing, but down here. You wanna line this one up? There we go. All right. There we go. We'll line that one up and then let's use our clips again and keep this all held together. So put one 
here in the middle and on this side. Yep. Excellent. All right. You want to start in this corner here? Yeah. All right. We're just doing the same thing that we did before. We're going to sew all the way around. And when you get to these big bulky spots, you can use the trick to put it under the presser foot if you need to, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That looks perfect. It looks great, buddy. Good job! You made it all the way around. Look at that. Ooh. All right, let's sit this right here so they can see. He's stitched all the way around the outside, and because we made this envelope back, now you can flip it. You want to turn it? Yeah. Do the big reveal. Boom. Here, you can stand up over here so everyone can see. Oh, yeah. Get on and do this, this, a little bit more of that. A little bit more of that, right? All right, look at that. Push, poke your corners out. Look at that. That's awesome. Me to help you get those little corners? That's why it's good to learn with somebody, right? Yeah. Okay, let's get these ones down here too. Look! Boom! Ta-da! We did it! We did it! How cool is that, buddy? Now we just gotta put it in all the foam and stuff. Yep, and so we just used a 16-inch pillow form. You wanna grab the finished one back there? Yeah. Awesome. Let's bring that up here. So you can see here, we've just put a 16 inch pillow form inside. We quilted this one with red. So any thread color you choose is gonna look awesome with this project. And I just wanna point out that this um, pattern was designed in conjunction with Quilt Cadets by Little Pincushion Studio. And she has some other darling um, kids projects that she's designed as well through the Quilt Cadets program. So you're gonna wanna check that out. And be sure to stick around and hear a little bit about the Quilt Cadets program from Latifa after this. But Ezra, you get your first merit badge. Boom. Pretty cool, huh? That's yeah. awesome. You excited to do more? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, we will see everybody next time, right? Yeah. See you later. Hi, my name is Latifa Sefir, and I'm really excited to share with you today Quilt Cadets. Quilt Cadets is a line of patterns and products specifically for kids who sew. It's designed just for them. It's written in their language. It's heavily illustrated. And hopefully they're fun projects that they'll be excited to sew and to work with and to play and to use it as a base for creativity. I learned how to sew as a young child. I was six or seven when my mom taught me. She set me and my sister on her knee and we sat in front of her old Montgomery Ward mechanical machine and she taught us all the basics of how to sew. So when we got interested in sewing, we probably were 10 or 11 or 12. And she then taught us how to put in a buttonhole, a zipper, and gave us the machine. We did garment sewing at the time. And she had the confidence in knowing that we'll be safe around our machines but she, because she taught us well. But outside of that, she gave us the machine and says, here, play. The beauty of learning how to sew at a young age is that you gain confidence, you're fearless, um, your creativity hasn't been stifled yet, and it's really just a fertile ground for learning anything, but specifically for learning how to sew. I wanted to create a whole line of products that allowed us, um, you know, the parent or the guardian or the friend or the teacher at the quilt shop a vehicle for sharing our love of sewing with the future generations. Enter Quilt Cadets. It's a line of seven patterns and there's hardware kits and badges and everything which I'll talk about in just a minute. Now the seven patterns are all skill building patterns. We start off with tote bags and pillows and that type of thing. I'll walk you through the patterns really quickly. So the first three are the original three Quilt Cadets patterns that have been refreshed and 
We have my goat's totes, which is a tote bag pattern with lots of different options, allow you to learn lots of skills and you can remake the pattern a lot and cre create different style ba bags every time. The refresh is that they now have these fun applique designs that are also included that you can really be fun and creative on the outside of your bag. You can do square corners or rounded corners. You can choose to make a quilted pillow or a pillow with the band at the bottom. So just a really, really fun pattern, but great for learning. The next we have Kid Cave Pillows. So it's a combination of that standard pillow that we know is great to learn on, which is a pillowcase, but it also has a, a um, pillow sham as well as a throw pillow in here as well. And the refreshes, it gives you some fun applique for some word bubbles as well. So um, that's really a fun, fun version. And my favorite out of the original three is mood pillows. And mood pillows is fun because it allows you to have one face on the front and one on the back. So you have a combination of cat features, um, people features, as well as the monster features. And they're fun, cute monsters, so no worries there. But the idea was that the kids can have a mood, a one mood on one side and one on the other, and they can turn it on whatever side is their mood at the time. But they're really just a fun pillow. They put one face on one side and one on the other. I'll show you cats because the cats are really fun. So we have one here and one there. Now, one of the reasons I love this particular project is because of the fact that this is where that creativity comes in. So you're sewing, you're learning that skill. It's kind of an envelope style pillow, but they get a chance to really express themselves in this pattern. Now, the last four patterns, I asked my friend Annabelle Wrigley, Little Pincushion Studio, to design, to design them. And she is brilliant. At Little Pincushion Studio, she actually worked with kids all the time, continuously, like down in the trenches. And she really got a great feel for what they needed when, as they were learning. And she has a brilliant ability to pair up super cute and really fun with simple and it's kind of a hard combination so we need it to be simple and clean enough to where they can accomplish it so it's not super complicated but we want it to be really fun as well so these are the last four projects so we have brecky bags which are these two little crossbody bags they're putting in a zipper because what happens when you're a child you don't know that you can't do this a zipper is not difficult you put on a zipper foot and it's a straight stitch to install a zipper the pattern walks you through step-by-step step how to do that. The next thing that we have is Moonbeam Pillow where we're doing our first sort of patchworky piecing, patchworky type piecing. Um, and this is fun and they can quilt it or not as well. And with their walking foot. And then we have Enchanted Travel Pillows. I love this one right here. I'll show it to you because it's super cute. It's Enchanted because it's a unicorn or a dragon. You can choose between the two. And it's just a fun, fun pillow. It's great for um, if your children want to make something before they travel, if they make want to make it for a gift, if you want to get them involved with making teachers um, gifts and, prize and presents at the end of the season. And it's just a really fun project. The very last one that Annabelle created for us is called Braveheart Backpack. This is the most complicated out of all of the patterns. But... We use the same philosophy for quilt cadets as I do with in my other patterns with Latifah Sephir Studios, and that is nothing is difficult if we take it one step at a time, step by step by step. Um, it's not a first pattern necessarily, but after they've accomplished one or two of the others, there's no reason why they can't do this right here. And Annabelle, once again, was brilliant in how she was able to create a real backpack, but still to simplify it so that it's not so complicated that they can't accomplish these. All of the patterns were tech edited and they were also tested by real kids as well. So real kids actually completed the Braveheart backpack um, in testing in the field before we finished it. Now one of the things that I wanted to do when I designed this, this whole series of products and that is to make sure that we anchor it in having a lot of fun and creating joy within the whole product line. So I wanted fun surprises throughout and I wanted things that they can like work towards and, you know, so they can have feel, feelings of accomplishment. So I included two things, which I think are really, really fun. One thing is that inside of every pattern, there's a little prize. It can be a sticker 
or a collector's card. I'll show you a few. So we have stickers here. That's a sticker. That's a sticker. We have collector's cards. We have temporary tattoos. There's little um, games. There's lots of fun things inside it. Each pattern has one individual prize inside that they get to find. I just kept thinking, um, how much fun was it to, to buy like the Cracker Jacks and to pull out a prize in each package? And they were fun and silly and small, but they were also fun. And so that was the first thing that we included. The second thing that I'm really excited about, and I love it so, so very much, is that we built in a series of 12 different merit badges that you can earn as you make. And um, one of the things I wanted to, I didn't want kids to have the same issue that we have with having 10 million whips that we never finish. And so they're great to incentivize finishing projects. So um, I'll show you a couple of them because they're so fun. So this is one of my favorites, which is the first project batch. First project batch, um, it's just a sewing machine, but it's really great. Another one of my favorites is this pin, the tomato pin cushion, but it's for precision sewing. And um, we have a hand sewing badge. We have a curved sewing badge. We have a straight line quilting badge, which has a walking foot in it. They'll have some opportunities to learn to do that. We have a zipper badge and a pillow badge and a bag badge. Now, how do you use these? There's a, a number of ways you can do it. And my, I encourage you to find a way that works for the kids in your life that are playing with the Quilt Cadets patterns. You can just buy them and gift them to them and they can use them in their creativity and add them to their projects and that type of thing. You can also use it as an incentive for finish, finishing projects. So my first project badge, of course, that's apropos for whenever Quilt Cadet project they finish first, they'll get that badge right there. But say you have a group of a few kids and you want to teach them to make a project over the summer and you guys work on it for over the course of a few days. And at the end, you can have an award ceremony where everyone gets badges. Badges can be put on something very traditional like a sash, like we do with Girl Scouts. But I love the concept of adding them to our projects or also you can put them on a denim jacket or let the kids be creative and figure out how they want to use their badges as well. So I love the idea of badges. Each pattern does have a point system sort of on the back where with every project they finish, they get a point towards earning badges. And this is a self-guided tracking system. There's a badge tracker that you can download on the Quilt Cadets website. And that's something you can do as well. So it's, there's no hard and fast rule for how you use these in, um, in creating and playing with the whole Quilt Cadets program. One of the things I really, really want to encourage you to do is to make sure you anchor your Quilt Cadets experience with your kids whoever they are, however old they are, because this is only requires a kid at heart. And truth be told, it really is a great beginner sewing pattern. Um, the whole line is great to learn how to sew with. But to anchor it in joy and in fun and create space for creativity. So because I think that that was a space that my mom created for us with the freedom of giving us the machine and letting us just sew and have fun we didn't realize that Vogue patterns were hard, which were, you know, there were lots of um, the big four patterns that companies at the time, we had to go to uh, the store and purchase them. And so we weren't afraid to try. You want to create that safe space for the kids in your life as well. So if they want to create a crazy face on the front of their mood pillow, give them the space to do that. If they want to select crazy fabrics for their Braveheart um, backpack, then that's perfectly okay as well. As long as we have them sewing and as long as they're having fun, that's really all that's important. Thanks so much for allowing me to share this with you today. I hope you have so much fun with Quilt Cadets and share pictures with all of us so we can participate in your joy. Thank you so much. Hey everyone, it's Misty. Thanks for watching at home. If you aren't already a part of our Missouri Star family, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell if you want a notification every time we release a new video. I'll see you next Monday on the newest episode of At Home.